before that day. No, that was actually a little wild that we had only DM'd and then we're like, do you want to start a podcast? And I was like, here's my full government name and phone number. Absolutely. I love it. I just knew. My boyfriend was so concerned. I remember it was, we were getting ready to watch House of Dragons and he was like, so you're starting a podcast? Like, you know them or you don't know them? And I was like, no, I know them. Like, I know them. And he was like, like, they live here? And I was like, no. No, no, not at all. (laughs) I have a parasocial relationship with this person from being on the internet together. I was like, we know each other in a way deeper sense that you could possibly know someone. Right, exactly. I mean, I got in trouble with my husband because I invited 12 people sight unseen to our wedding when I got drunk once, so. Inviting 12 people somewhere, blanket statement, 12 is a very significant number. Like, 12 is just a significant number of people. And then for it to be at your wedding where it costs, like, I don't know, a $1,000 a fucking person for some reason. Yeah, that was wild of me. I I invited a 20-person group and they all came. I did it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Teacher Quit Talk. I'm Fraz, and I'm our- Miss Redacted. And she's our guest. I'm the and guest. I the call gonna- is coming from inside the house, you guys. We are going to see how much information we can get out of Redacted about leaving her job. The only reason I haven't said everything is because it just seems like quite the undertaking. I've tried to record so many videos explaining what happened, but then every time I get to it and I'm like, I feel physically cannot utter the words in part two. Like I physically cannot do that. I can't do that. And then I thought about making a YouTube video and then I was like, well, I don't don't even want to open that Pandora's box. So here we are. I started the podcast just so that you could tell me the story. I, this is a long game that I'm playing. (laughs) It took till episode like 27. (laughs) Podcast done. (laughs) Got what I wanted out of you. Here are your $13 from Patreon. Talk to you next Episode 21. This episode is going to be the last. I got what I wanted, so here we go. So, redacted. You usually ask the questions, so it's really weird for me to ask questions. This is a good exercise for me. You taught in Florida. Yes, I taught in Florida. And I, from the moment I thought about being a teacher, I said, the only, only way I will ever teach is if I am teaching something I actually like talking about. I was like, I spent a lot of my K through 12 public education just being so frustrated and so bored and not learning what I wanted to learn. So like, I just can't be in that environment again. But I think if I was talking about something that I do like to learn about, this could actually be really, really fun for me. And then I saw how very low Florida has for right. standards of teachers. So I got my temporary certification, which you just have to take some multiple choice tests to get that. And then I found a position where they needed U.S. history teachers. So when I looked at what history classes children in Florida take, because mm-hmm. I went to school in Georgia, like K through 12, I saw 11th graders take U.S. history. And then I freaking was so happy when I saw that 11th graders take civil war on U.S. history, because I always felt like when I was in 11th grade, we just rushed through everything so, 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 so fast. Mm -hmm. So I saw that and everyone was telling me, they're like, you're not going to get a job teaching 11th grade history. They only hire football coaches. They were like, there's no way the positions will be available. You're going to get stuck doing something else. So the funny thing is I like had started applying to jobs, but everyone Mm -hmm. had told me like, you don't get a job until like right before the school year starts because that's when they get their budgets approved. But they had such bad vacancies that like I knew I would get a job. I was really tired of people people asking me where I was going to work because I just didn't feel like explaining this weird ass system. So I, I picked a random school and then I was like, I'm just going to tell people that I work at this school just to like get them to leave me alone because I was living in Georgia, saving money to move to South Florida. And so I was like, I just want to tell them a place. And then that school wasn't hiring, which I didn't really care which school I worked at. But then last minute that school was hiring for 11th grade US history and like last minute interviewed me and I got my job like a week before the school year started. It was fate. It really was. It was. And even though I've thrown all the shade in the entire world to my former admin, I actually loved that school. Like I really loved the kids and the community and the other teachers. It was a great school and a great first school for me to Mm -hmm. be at. Yeah. So that was your first year. You taught there for all four years. So I, when I was in college, after I decided to kind of go the teaching route, I got a job as a substitute teacher at an early Head Start Mm -hmm. Center and worked there while I finished college my senior year. And so I taught there for a year and then I moved and I taught in for two full years and then I left February of my third year. 
Was it the same admin the whole time, though? Because your admin ultimately was no. the... No. Okay. So the principal <laughs> that hired me, great. He was a principal for a very long time. He wasn't super present in the school, but everything he did, I felt like he was very, like, calm and took a lot of people into consideration. Like, we definitely had problems. Like, our communication was kind of disorganized and stuff like that. But I never felt like things were just gone out of, like, negligence or he was, like making decisions in a way that didn't make sense. And then it was my first year teaching, so I did have some problems. And the very few times that I came to him like with things, he like was really ready to help me. And he was just like a very calm person. And because he had been principal for so long, people had their own vibe and workflow between themselves. So even when he would be gone for a while, stuff wasn't falling apart constantly. And he was pretty hands off, like admins were able to make decisions on their own. Like if I went to my grade level chair, they like could make the decision they wanted to make and he would never hear about it. Not in like a bad way, but just in like a he trusted people to do their jobs way. Yeah, totally. Which is what you want. Exactly. So like definitely I was not super close to him, didn't talk to him a ton of times, but like overall positive experience with him. And then... It was at the end of that year that he was getting transferred to a different school and he was really, really, really upset about it and really didn't want to go and said that they tried to do it a couple times and he had been avoiding it, but he kind of just didn't have a say anymore. I think it shows like how much he cared about the school because the school he was going to was what a lot of people would refer to as an easier school. It was a school that kids had to test into. It was very small and it had an A rating. Is that like a magnet school? I don't remember what it was. We have like a couple weird different versions of that here. It's free and it's public, but kids have to test into it and it's like one of the Mm -hmm. career prep Mm -hmm. type of places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we got a new principal who I actually knew some people who knew him and had heard wildly mixed things like I had heard people be like this man saved my career I love him I would lay down my life for him and then I also heard people being like I never want to be in the same room with him again he's disgusting he's eager like I literally heard everything so I had no idea what to expect that's like almost worse than having like a polarized reaction though exactly and then my first year he came in and was like super gregarious super nice I remember the first conversation I had with him I emailed him and I was like hey congratulations on becoming principal because he hadn't been a it was like a promotion for him I think and I was like here's my personal number like would love to talk over the phone introduce myself whatever because it came this news happened like a couple weeks before school was starting so it was summer break he called me and literally the first thing he said he was like Miss Redacted I heard you're the best I can't wait to like see the magic you have in your classroom like literally so nice I love that and then the first year I worked with him really Mm -hmm. fine like in meetings he would let other people talk I had gone to him for a few like little things I love how that's (laughs) a precursor because we know what's to come that it's like he was great he let other people speak it was amazing (laughs) The bar's in hell, but yeah. You could tell that he was, like, trying to be involved in everything and observe everything, but, like, nothing crazy was happening. So sometimes, like, stuff would get messed up, and I'd be like, whatever, like, it happens. And then at the end of that school year, he sent this email. So the way a lot of the positions at the school worked, I worked at a pretty small school. It had... 900 kids at it. A lot of jobs that might be a full-time job at one school are not. And it's like done by a teacher as like a mini job where you get paid extra. So like department chairs, testing coordinators, things like that. Like they are teachers, but they get a decent amount of extra pay for it because it is like a whole job. So a lot of the people in those positions had been in them for like 10, 15 years, which is very common. He sent an email at the end of the school year where he basically says, I can't remember what the body of the email was, but it's basically like, I've been observing all year and we can be better. And then said, all of the following positions are open. Please email me if you would like to interview for them and listed every single position there that had had people in it for like 10 or 15 years. Literally every single one. Whoa, without warning. I don't know. I tried to get an answer about that and... It was very tight lipped. That was the other thing. It's like lots of this is between us. Don't tell this person about this. This is a decision that was made, but like lots of that kind of energy. Never a good sign. Yeah. So I like asked a couple people and they were like, yeah, I would just always get the answers like, yeah, technically they're all open every year. That's just what everyone would say because technically 
every year, the teacher has to be like, hey, I would like to do this position and then sign a thing saying that they're doing it to get the extra pay for it. To me, that's very different than like, it's open, everybody right. apply publicly. Right. I just feel like something had to happen. So my former IA and my teacher bestie, who like then turned into like a real bestie who was like in my wedding and shit, both of them have a principal this year who last year was incredible And this year, like, their school's under review, like, something about test scores. And, like, the stress has made their principal a crazy person. I think that literally it's exactly what he said, where he came in and was like, I'm going to observe for a year and then I'll get started. Like, I think that was his plan the whole time. Because there were lots of other things, like, looking back that I, like, looked at differently after he sent that email. So there were, like, a couple times where he would, like, come in my classroom and ask questions that, like, at the time, I didn't perceive them as, like, pointed or accusatory because I was kind of used to that from the district. But looking back, I'm like, oh, you were, like, kind of checking me right. on my shit a little bit, and it just didn't register to me because I would I'm always have my shit together, so I'm I, like, to you because I didn't know perceive you psycho- it as psycho- an attack. I'm thrilled that I'm talking to you because I know you psychoanalyzed this man. Oh, absolutely. Extensively. Mm-hmm. So I really think his first year, that was just the plan because other teachers told me that he would, like, pop in on them and then, like... It start writing stuff down. And then my second year, that's when like shit really started to get rocky. Um, because that was August 2021. Yes. One thing I will grant him, this is the only nice thing I will say about him on this entire podcast is he genuinely tried to enforce COVID guidelines and keep us as safe as possible and quarantine people when he was supposed to. In South Florida. Yeah. Like, when the governor was fighting individual districts because they wanted to wear masks. Like, he was very strict on the mask. I had colleagues in other schools who said their principal would go on stage in the faculty meeting and take off the mask and be like, we don't have to wear this, just so you know, it's my school. I don't care what the district says. So I was really, really grateful that year to work for someone who, like, did encourage us to get vaccinated as much as he could say, did have masks available for everybody, like, did really try and make an effort on that. So I went into the school year, like, pretty optimistic with him because I was like, oh, even though there's been this weirdness, like, he's never done anything weird to me. And from what I've seen, he's trying to keep us as safe as possible and just, like, do what the district is telling him to do. And then that Mm -hmm. year is when it started to get intense. The thing that was, I would say, like, my biggest pain point with him is he was the opposite of my old principal who was pretty hands-off and would trust people to make decisions. He wanted to be hyper-involved in every single decision, but, like, no one person has the bandwidth for that. So stuff was falling through the cracks all the time. And when I would try and get other people to make a decision, they would be like, "You sh-, like, he will scream at us. Like, he will reprimand me. You should have seen what happened I, last time I did that. Like, he had a reputation for getting so, so, so upset at people if he felt like they went above his head when beforehand, like, if I asked my grade level admin to approve a field trip or, like, a class visitor or something, it would get approved. When now, every single decision would have to go straight to him. So like he would come in and you could just tell he was so stressed out and he had a lot of pressure on the district from him, but was also changing stuff constantly, um, changing schedules constantly. He would also, this is a part that was really frustrating to me. It felt like dealing with like a narcissistic co-parent because he would hire a DJ for all the kids to like have a little party. So like so great, but we wouldn't know about it in advance, there would be no plan for getting them there. And then like, I I was supposed to be giving them like a district assessment that day. Yeah, that's brutal. I always felt like I was being like a killjoy for complaining because then I would just give out like, oh, you don't want the kids to have these fun opportunities? And like, obviously I do. Of course. What was the grade level range? It was grades nine through 12. And I taught exclusively 11th. With, actually, it's a lie. I had a couple 12th graders who were repeating. Because in elementary school, if I had to give a district math assessment, that was like number one on the day. But if we had like a random assembly or a fire drill, like I knew I can just move math to after lunch. But you have your kids for like one period. So it was even worse than that. We were on a block oh, schedule. God. So I only got to see them every other day. So if you put me behind an hour you're actually putting me behind two days so that difference is huge yeah so like just the schedule was always a lot and then I was also being given like so much pressure for test scores because I was the district would have me give my students assessments and that was the other thing with the scheduling 
Um, those assessments would only be open for certain days and then they would lock after right. that. And I had to get 95% of the kids tested. Yeah. Good luck if they all fucking show up is the other thing. I don't know if you had that I issue. Liter- and like, if I call the district, I'm like, sorry, they're with the DJ right now. Like, they don't give a <laughs> fuck. for real. And he would like, it's like be super late yeah, to meetings, reschedule meetings because he was just like always overwhelmed. So we had like that going on where I felt like so I can't make decisions. So he's overwhelmed, but your fault if you can't make his shit work. Yeah, pretty much. So all of this is going on. Shit's hitting the fan. And so I had been consistently getting good results on test scores and every single other department was doing terribly in their test scores from a combination of the teachers not being equipped with the resources they need because my parents probably gave me $500 worth of online subscriptions to Nearpod, GimKit, Kahoot, like all the things. That's so nice. So I was getting constant verbiage from my reading coach, from admin at the school, from other teachers about how Miss Redacted's class is going to carry the school grade. Miss Redacted's class, that data, like she's holding our school together with that data. And so this is like very strong. I mean, you're a third year teacher with the weight of the entire school on your shoulders. Like that's... Yeah. It doesn't matter how long you've been teaching. If that kind of pressure is on you, like you're going to feel it. And if your principal is stressed out like that... It was just such an emotionally chaotic environment because the kids were also readjusting to being in school from COVID. It was a horrible year. I really lucked out that that year, I feel like I bonded fastest and best to that group of kids. And I had the least behavior issues that year. Probably because I was a lot more confident... But I really lucked out in that regard. But even though they were great, they still were having a lot of issues like being off their phones, focusing, yeah. staying awake, adjusting the schedule. Like, even though like they were being very nice and like all that, like they were still having those struggles. And the stakes are high. They're 11th graders. How many preps did you have? I only had one. I was very lucky. But still. So I only but was still. teaching U.S. history. A lot of the teachers at my school would have four preps because it was a small school. And I was like, I will take the bullet of being data for the entire school straight to the four head before I take on another prep. Like I give me all of the children, give me all of the test score pressure. I refuse to plan for more than one class at a time. So they all came through your class. You had all of them. Pretty much all of them. There was another teacher who had two classes. That's a lot. That year started off on kind of a weird note. I can't can't believe I forgot about this. I had six classes and two planning periods. One was for department planning and then one was just for me. And because we were on a block schedule, it would go every other day. A lot of teachers will give up their planning to take an extra class. That was something that people would like kind of fight over because there was limited opportunities for that and you would get a decent amount of money. The principal gave me the extra class without asking me. So I called him and I was like, hey, thank you so much. That was so nice of you because I knew that people had been like arguing over it. So I thought he was doing it as like a thanks for all your hard work, bestie. Enjoy some extra monies. He was like, I wanted you to have every single kid in US history so I would know all the test scores were good. And then he was like, you don't want it. Like a lot of people fight over that. And I was like, yeah, I just like my planning time's really important to me. Like that's why I'm able to get good test scores. And then I was like, I just really need my planning in order to get good test scores. And I even told him, I said, you can make my classes bigger because my classes, most of them were 18 to 23 kids. So I was like, I can handle a class of 25, like make every single one 25. He just really didn't like that because I think like narcissists hate getting their gifts rejected. (laughs) Right. So I think he (laughs) thought he was giving me a gift. And then when I like politely and professionally was like, hey, no, thank you. That really didn't sit well with him. Yes, of course, because he's a fucking narcissist. But how many teachers listening to this have been punished by being rewarded with more work? There's an element of what teachers experience where we want to be good at our jobs on the DL so yeah. that nobody knows because then you have like you with your principal situation that you're explaining and me as everybody knows with the behavior kids that they put all in my class because they thought, oh, she she formed such good relationships. Let's give her all of them. Her relationship queen. <laughs> when you're having the behaviors that you're having that are all over the place that require like this deep investment in each student. You can't, you're not a miracle worker. Yeah. You know, so you, you setting that boundary should be something that your principal is like, oh, I want you to have everything you need to be the teacher that you are because you're not doing badly. I felt like when I came to him and I told him that, I thought he was going to be really receptive of it because I was like, you're the one that came in my classroom a bunch of random times to check my lesson plan binder and made multiple comments about how impressed you were that it was so thorough. He was just replied and he was like, okay, thank you very much. Like, I'll have the class removed from your schedule and added to someone else's. And so I kind of thought like, 
Great, we can all move on, a little bit weird, but whatever. Then the first faculty meeting of the year, he has every single new teacher at that school in the front row, over half of them left within the year, by the way. He calls me up to the front and is like, I just wanna give Miss Redacted a shout out because she had the best data last year, even through COVID, even through everything, her kids still performed. And it's cause I saw her, she never left early. She blah, 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 gives his whole little spiel. And I was like, wow, that was really nice. I thought we kind of had beef cause of that email thing, but great. Tells the whole school how great my data is. I sit down, like it was literally like a movie. He immediately starts going on this tirade. This is the first faculty meeting of the year. He's like, I know we're gonna be better this year, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna take work and investment for each of you, like very football coach style, which is like, if that's your style, that's your style, dude. But then he goes, if you had the best data in this school and you know kids are successful sitting in your room and you're turning down extra work, you're why this school will never be great. And you need to think about that immediately after he had thanked me for having the best data. Wait, wait, okay, whoa. So like emotional violence from day one of the 21 to 22 like school really year. Abu- that's like really abusive. Mm-hmm. That's like really like textbook shit right there. I remember I was like, oh, I definitely hallucinated because there's no way that that just happened. Did your colleagues know that you had turned down that? Yes. Turned down that? Not all of them, but people within but, like, my department. there were department. people who, so they were picking up the thread that was just yes. dropped. Well, also because he started off saying, I want to thank Mr. Redacted oh, right. for having and the best I data. And then immediately my- said. Oh, right. And I just fucking lost my mind because I already, I was like so. I fr- he did that shit with his whole chest right that's why i freaked out i just see i just i hallucinated i blacked out because i was so disturbed no literally because you you it happens and you're like there's no way like there's there's no way my brain's brain's inserting an alternate reality because my brain's like that's not something that somebody would do but it is okay so fuck so i was just like fuck okay that was weird and then the rest of that speech oh i wish i like had written more down while i was there um, he oh. was, I remember the, him sweating. Like, I remember the, we were in the, um, like the theater, like the auditorium. And I remember the lights on him and him just sweating and screaming. And he was like, you need to prepare to work harder than you've worked in your entire lives. Mind you, this is entering the 21 school year after we have just experienced coronavirus. He said, if you thought you worked hard last year, wake up. This is my dream job. I've always wanted to be principal of this school. We will make this school great and you're not going to stand in my way. And I literally, I was like, who is this? Because before in faculty meetings, he would just give kind of general updates and then like let everyone else do their little department thing. And then from this, like that first meeting of the year on, every single meeting had at least a 30 minute speech from him. And this is where you got dragged multiple times from my understanding. So that was the crazy thing is like a narcissistic abuser. Every meeting I would either get dragged or praised. How was this? So I don't know like even what month this is at this point because I know what month you left, but like how... How is this affecting you outside of school? Like, how are you doing? Like, every morning, I'll be so nauseous and so anxious and just mm-hmm. filled with, like, so, so, so much dread because I was yes. like, I just don't know what's going to happen today. Like, is it going to be a flawless day, like how a lot of days are when I don't get interrupted? Or am I going to get a random announcement that says, all 11th graders, please report to the auditorium. The University of South Florida is here to do a presentation, which, like, absolutely, I want you to see that. We are literally in the middle of a test. (laughs) But yeah, so because I was also worried about my finances Mm -hmm. um, and I decided I was like, oh, I should look for a new job. And then I did my resume over Thanksgiving. My mom helped me with it when I was home for Thanksgiving and then just applied like a crazy person throughout the month of December. But I applied to like over 200 jobs in order to get the job that I have. Wow. What made you want to start applying? Did it just like organically happen and you were like, I'm fucking done? Or was it after like a particularly awful scream sesh? Like, what was it? I was having this weirdness where I was like, I've never felt more confident teaching. Like my classroom management has never been better. I've never been delivering the content as well as I have right now. Because also like I started teaching and COVID happened. So I was like in the room with all the kids and it just felt so good. But then I was also like so miserable. And I was seeing what was happening on TikTok with everyone leaving teaching is what it felt like. I was afraid if I waited until I finished the year to start applying, 
I wasn't going to find anything because the job market was going to be really oversaturated because I was like, a lot of teachers are waiting till the end of the year to apply. With the job market the way it is right now, I think I should just take advantage of something if it comes my way. And I decided like, I'm just going to leave when I can leave. And it was really hard. And my sister said something that I was like, damn, you're right. And she goes, no one who's like at a low point in their life or thinking about what went wrong goes back and is like, oh, my 11th grade US history teacher left in February and it all came crashing down from then. And then I was kind of like, you're right. Like, yes, (laughs) not that fucking serious. Exactly. No, 100%. So, okay, should we do our mid break, mid break? thing oh right i forgot about that well, thanks <laughs> what should we say just like a we'll be back um <laughs> we'll be back after a message from somebody other than us <laughs> did i tell you about my weird connection to faith i'll have to tell you later at another date but anyways so, so. in january of 2022 there was something that happened that i was like yeah i really need to get the fuck out of here like immediately Um, when I'd already been aggressively applying to jobs, I had to take my students to like the center part of the school, like this big rotunda, because someone was there to test their vision, which I had not been given prior notice of, um, and was just The vision, the vision test is always just rogue. They roll in when they want. I don't know if it's like getting summoned for court, like they just show up one day. (laughs) Actually, I know it's not because my old principal had emailed me two days before and was like, hey, all your children will be taken for a vision test. There you go. Figure it out. That's all I ask. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking down with them and they were in like a a rough line because they're in high school. So I would walk them in like a pack more than a line. I was at like the back of the rough line. So the kids walk up and this administrator starts yelling at them to go to this other part. And then I walk up and I'm like, hey, where did you send them? And he was like, Mr. Redacted, where are your kids? Your kids need to be lined up against this wall. And I was like, you just told them to go over there and like kind of got a little feisty back. Yeah. And then he really raised his voice and was like screaming and was like, you need to listen to me and get your kids. Do not tell, like literally freaked out. And I was like, don't speak to me that way. I'm going to get my kids and we'll get in line. And then the kids started freaking out because when he raised his voice, some of my male students like got up closer and was like, don't talk to my teacher that way. And it just like really escalated. And I was like, everyone separate. Like, we're done. <laughs> Shut it down. We're all getting our vision tested. You're here to be fitted for contacts. Yeah. Um, I love that they defended you. No, really. I was like, okay, I have bought your love successfully with Starburst. Yay, it works. <laughs> Build those relationships and they'll protect you from your principal. So... Assistant principal. This was an admin, right, not the I principal. Recall. Right, right, right. This is an admin. So this happens. I line the kids up, and they're in high school, and there's a bunch of adults around, so don't think that I just abandoned them. But I was like, I need to go to the office really quick. Have fun getting your vision tested. I'll be yeah. right back. So I go to tell the principal what happened immediately. Because in my opinion, this happened in front of the entire 11th grade. You had a male administrator screaming at a f- yeah. female teacher, and you had kids trying to, like, get involved in the situation so like I put myself in his shoes as a principal I was like I would want to know about this immediately so I go to his office and I'm like I need to talk to you right now which I've never ever ever done so I him like brushing me off to me is like an extra red flag if someone's never done that like you should be like what the fuck happened and he was like I can't talk right now come back after school and I said if I were you I'd want to know about this right now and he was like okay fine so he took me into his office I tell him I'm like shaking because I it had just happened and I was just like shaken up and he looks at me and he goes I'm sorry that you feel something happened come back after school and we can have a conversation about it ew it was on camera all these kids saw and I was like so I just said okay and then walked out and then I went back after school and I sat there for 35 minutes while he was on the phone and then found out that he like left and so then I went home and so then I went back again and then talked to him some more and he said like okay I'll have you and the administrator in my office for a conversation. I followed up six times to have that conversation and it never happened. This wasn't a parent. This wasn't a kid. This wasn't like a rando off the street. This was another employee of this school that did this in front of kids. And I told him, I was like, what do you want me to say to the kids? Cause they ask, they ask if that administrator got in trouble for that. Shortly after that, I got the interview for the job that I have now. When I told my kids I was leaving, they were really happy. Well, they were really, really sad and upset and some of them cried and I cried and it was a lot 
But so many of them were like, good for you. They were like, the way he talks to you guys is not okay. And one of them goes, after how Mr. So-and-so talked to you, I'm surprised you didn't walk out that day. You're better than me because that's what I would have done. Yeah. So they were like pretty here for it when I left, even though they were really upset. So that was a lot. And the process of me turning in my two weeks notice was also a lot. Because Florida is an at-will employer. So I know a lot of states you can, like, get in trouble for leaving early and stuff. And I did. The only consequence I faced is I wasn't able to submit my course transcript to get my professional certification. So I did take all those classes for nothing. But, you know, it's in the past. My plan was I got this new job and I was like, I have tried to go to this man so many times and ask for help and be kind and explain everything. There's no point in me making a big show of this. I know it's not going to change anything. So I'm just going to leave like as peacefully as I possibly can. And so I wrote literally just like typed it up, hit print to whom it may concern. I've accepted a position at a new organization. My last day working here will be this. I will transfer over all materials, blah, blah, blah. If you need anything, please do not hesitate to reach out. Even after that date, I'm whatever. Like it was a very, very basic letter. I went to him after school. I just brought it to him. Also, what literally made me want to like bang my head against the table is I had like put a little piece of tape on it so it wouldn't like flop open on my desk because I didn't want any of the kids to see it. And then he, like, couldn't get the tape off. So it was literally, like, a scene from, like, Arrested Development. We were, like, sitting there. And he didn't know what the letter was. And mind you, like, even though he's crazy, I was, like, number one star student to him. Because I was on time every day and had good test scores. So I knew this was going to be a big blow to him. Also, because the whole school's test scores were relying on me. So I knew he was going to, like, not be happy about this. So I'm watching him struggle with this piece of tape. He has to get scissors to cut it open. Like, (laughs) I'm so bad. And then he reads it and is like, I'm so shocked to hear this from you. And I was like, I said, me too. And then he was like, well, I've always said I never want to hold anyone back from their next steps. So we really appreciate all the work that you've done. Like, thank you for everything you've done for the school. And I wish you well. Wow. That started out really mature. So I was like, great. And I'm thinking I'm just going to work my last two weeks and then move on with my life. And then we had to go to this meeting later that week where you basically present the kids halfway through the year test scores and say, like, this is what they're doing well in, what they're not doing well in, this is what I'm going to do to make sure they do well on the end of year, whatever. I still did it because I was like, I have insights to these that could be helpful to someone. And I also offered to lesson plan out the rest of the entire year and record videos of me teaching. Literally was going to do that for them for free. So during this meeting, I was kind of talking about that and like presented my data, whatever. And the one of the administrators was like, wow, I'm really impressed that you did this knowing that like you're moving on to a new position. We really appreciate that. So I sit down and then this other teacher goes up and his classroom had been like 40 to 55 degrees the entire year. And I live in South Florida. So that is both expensive and unnecessary. And he had been complaining about that a lot. No one had done anything about it. And so at the end of his little presentation, the last prompt we had, was like, what do you need from the administration? And he put a meme of a polar bear and was like, fix my AC because I'm freezing my ass off. (laughs) Hilarious. 10 out of 10. The vice principal is like, I just cannot believe that you would put profanity in this. That was so unprofessional. And my dumb ass with nothing to lose, I go, I think it's pretty unprofessional that his classroom's been 45 degrees all year long. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) And you should have seen, I would give anything for the footage of this meeting. I would give anything for it. You should have seen everyone's face. I love that you said that. The vice principal was like, misredacted, this doesn't involve you. You don't need to be. And then the principal started yelling over the vice principal because they had like a weird power dynamic. And then that teacher that said that stood up and was like, I don't need this shit. Consider this my notice. Goodbye walked out and it just like really, really, really escalated. The principal was standing. He slammed his hands on the table. He called security to go after the teacher. Like shit just kind of hit the fan. What was security going to do? They just like went to his classroom with him and he took his stuff and then they were like, are you just going to leave? And he was like, yeah. They like, the principal like wanted it to be a thing of him getting escorted to his car, but our security guards were like, whatever. Yeah, toodaloo. (laughs) Wow. So that happened. What they did not know in that meeting 
is that that morning I had turned in this form to the office because the principal was like, when I put in my two weeks, he was like, hey, you're going to have to fill out a district form. I'll email it to you. Just like drop it off whenever over the next two weeks. And the form requested reasons for resignation. So I was did not lie. I put unprofessionalism from administrators, lack of communication from administrators, and like lack of livable wage or something like a money one. I realize now the principal left that meeting, went to his office, and that form was on his desk. Amazing. He deserves it. He sucks. So then I like go on. I'm teaching the rest of the day. <laughs> Not a consequence is going to come my way. <laughs> And then I'm teaching my last class of the day. Security comes to the door and is like, hey, the principal wants to see you in his office. And I still ignorant. I was I was like, oh, yeah, I'm almost done with teaching about the cold war. I'll be there in like 15. <laughs> I love it so much. Because like we were literally almost done with the Nearpod. I'm not going to stop, then come back. Because no. I wanted it to be like, now I'm done teaching. Here's your assignment. Bye bye. So I'll be back. Right, right. So <laughs> right, right. I go down there wearing jeans, vans, and a tie-dye magic school bus t-shirt. Just for context. I walk into the principal's office. Every administrator is wearing a suit and also on one side of the table. And then there's a singular chair on the other side of the oh table. Oh, my God. And when I think about the fact that they sat there like that for 15 minutes, I die. Because what were y'all talking about <laughs> while I had you waiting? One administrator that I really liked, who was the one time who was like, hey, are you depressed? Um, and then the one administrator that I had that issue with where he screamed at me, neither of them made eye contact with me the entire meeting. Both of them were like... Do, 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 do. It's like the way, like when your coworker is like breastfeeding, that you just like <laughs> literally try and look everywhere but that. Like, yeah. <laughs> they were like, we want to talk to you about what was said in the meeting. And I said, first off, I want to apologize. I shouldn't have said that. It just added fire to the situation. It was unprofessional. I wasn't thinking. And I'm really sorry for how it played out. Good for you. Because I was like, let me just apologize. Because yeah. I knew what I said was like stupid and unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Funny. So funny. But funny. unnecessary. And so then they just like proceeded to go in like oh, they geez. I think were really caught off guard that I apologized and then they like pulled out that form and he was like so you're actually gonna turn this in and I was like yes and then they were like when have we been unprofessional and I was like when he screamed at me and you did nothing about it when I asked for the schedule three times and no one sent it when this random assembly happened like all, all these things and then he was like well we get complaints about you being unprofessional all the time you need to like I was, and I said, I said, you've never once brought that to nope. me. I'm really upset that if you were getting these complaints, I would have wanted to know about it. I said, mm -hmm. have parents been complaining about me? Because I've never had a parent complain directly mm -hmm. to me about mm -hmm. me. And I was like, what happened? And he was like, well, that doesn't matter now that you're leaving. And then he was like, you also need to be mindful of what you write over email. Just know that people read those emails and they can be used against you later. Because there would be times that I would email them and be like, this is the third time I'm following up. I need next week's schedule in order to plan my lessons for the assessment. Please advise. Because you need a Like, trailer. I would send kind of curt emails, but Good. they were never unprofessional. It was always mm -hmm. me asking for information that I should have been given. Which is just backing up what you put on your district form. Exactly. So then they're like, well, we have had all these complaints about you. And they're just going in and in and in and in and in. And so I said, it feels like we're going in circles. We're arguing about this same things? Am I free to go back to my classroom or do you have anything else that you need from me? And my biggest regret in this life is that I did not record that meeting because when I was walking into the office, I got like this wave over me where I just felt so anxious. And I was like, I think I should record this. And then I was like, no, nothing will happen. You don't need to record it. And mm -hmm. I absolutely wish that I had because they said like, if you turn this form into the district, we'll turn in everything that we have on you basically. And I was like, which is what? Right. So I was like, yeah, I am turning in the form. And I said in this meeting, is another reason like why I'm turning this in. Yeah. And so then I went back to my classroom and by then, because it had been like such a long argument, I was in there for like probably 25 or 30 minutes. Most of the kids like were done with their work. So I just kind of let them chill out and then was like, okay, bye bye, go home. And then I went to go tell some other veteran teachers and they were like shocked and they were like, I'm so sorry that that happened. Like they were so apologetic and they felt so bad. So I just like worked the rest of that like week after that. I taught the whole time. And then on my last day, I turned in like my keys and my remote and stuff to my department head and was just like, I'm not going to go to the office. And he was like, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, that's that's really the whole shebang, start to finish. Oh my. But then more happened after you left. That was not the whole shebang. Yeah. No. Well, that's the whole shebang of my time mm-hmm. there. So what happened after I left is I had like decided I wasn't going to put anything about how I was leaving on social media because I didn't want my students to see it, which I had told my students about a week. After that horrific meeting, I told my yeah. students after that because I was like, he's going to tell them and I don't want that to happen, so I'll tell them. And I wanted to give them time to turn in any missing assignments so that I could put the grades in for them. So I was committed to like not telling anyone on the internet that I was leaving and then I decided I'm just going to take a video on my last day and say that I left and it was like more dramatic than I wanted it to be, but I was just like really upset I re-recorded that video so many hmm. times and then after like trying to stop crying I was like you know what it is what it, it is, is, what it is. <laughs> so I posted it and then I found out through some people who were still at the school that the video was going around the school the kids were extremely extremely upset the kids were complaining because they said that was not the first person that they had heard quit because they were getting screamed at so then the kids from what I heard were starting to not like the principal when beforehand they all loved him because he was very nice to them and would hire DJs Uh (laughs) he bought them yeah which like same but Uh (laughs) then that video started going around I found out he was sending it to people and like the I someone showed me like him talking about it somewhere and like it looked like he used a thesaurus like he was like this incendiary all these big ass words that like not just I hadn't heard him use because I had heard him use big words but just like words that I'd never heard anyone Give use for that context where like you definitely used a thesaurus and then I found out he stood on stage at the faculty meeting screaming and said we have an enemy of this school and that enemy is on tiktok and if you are found associating with the enemy i will be coming after you personally so a bunch of people started calling me and we're like this motherfucker's crazy Mm -hmm. and then some people called me genuinely telling me to be mindful of my career and my safety because so i deleted my linkedin because he would go on stage and was like they don't know the consequence that's coming to them just know consequences will always come your way they're never going to work another day in this county. Oh no. Um, and so he's the reason I wasn't able to submit to get my professional because mm-hmm. originally they had told me you'll still have access to your email for a year. You can still submit it to us. But I guess he sent my videos for the district to the district and somehow got my email turned off early. Oh so that's why God. I wasn't able to submit my transcripts. So at multiple faculty meetings, he had been standing up screaming about me. I had heard about it At least two, I want to say three, where my TikTok was the entire topic of the faculty meeting. And he would keep people in there for like an hour and a half just screaming about how people are slandering him. And if you're here, you actually know. And so more people started leaving after that. And this is like so lame that I take this piece of validation. But like this one dude that worked at our school who was just like... He'd worked there forever and could literally handle anything. Like, I'd never seen him break to anybody. When he saw my videos of making fun of the principal, he said, damn, Miss Redacted's a G. And I was like, yeah, I am. Yes, you are. (laughs) I'm so glad you left. I mean, just the fact that he reacted like that. I mean, you took his power away and he was reacting to that. He was throwing a tantrum. Yeah. Textbook. For real. That's crazy. But yeah, so at multiple meetings, he was like screaming about that and screaming about my TikTok. And then the kids were watching my TikTok and were apparently making fun of him for the TikToks because of the one that I made where I was like, when you find out your old principal is screaming about you during faculty meetings and it says, sorry, hoes hate me because I'm the it girl audio. (laughs) Apparently the kids were like singing it and like making fun of it. I love that. (laughs) See, Anyone listening, this is why we relationship build. You want kids that are going to defend you not only after you're gone, but when you're getting screamed at by an authority figure. Did he ever teach? Do you know? He taught social studies and special education, I think. Interesting. He had been an admin for a very long time, though. He had been an admin longer than he was a teacher. I, I'm just disgusted with the way that he spoke to you, both one-on-one and in front of the students. I don't think that one or the other of those is worse. I think they're both horrible in their own way. We usually ask, like, would you ever go back? But I know that you want to go back. So if he was not there, I would work at that school right now. I loved that school. In terms of, like I mentioned before, I didn't have, like, bus duty or lunch duty. 
I really liked my schedule where I would have three classes a day that were really long. Um, it was super close to my house. I really liked the community that I worked in. I really liked a lot of the other teachers there. It was just him that made it unbearable. And part of me really, really regrets posting all of those videos. Part of me is glad that I did it because I'm like, it made you have to think about yourself. And from what I've heard of people that are still there, it's it's not nearly as bad and that he's like mellowed out a lot and it's actually like pretty good vibes right now. Good. I left in February and then almost half the teaching staff left between February and May. So I think a lot of people who were kind of on the edge when they saw like how fixated he got on me and just how like weird that was, they were just like, whatever, I'm done, I'm tapping out early. So part of me kind of regrets posting them because I'm like, I love that community and I feel like in some ways I'm kind of like viewed negatively because of how I left things. But there's been a couple moments that have been really reassuring to me where I've seen people that I used to work with and I'm not going to say who it was just in case anyone's listening, but if he's listening, he knows it was at an important event and it you was an important person. He gave me a hug and said, I just want you to know that you're thought of very, very highly by many people at this school. Oh, your co-worker? Yeah. That's really sweet. Right? I'm like about to cry. Oh, yeah. But part of me regrets posting it because I'm like, damn, he's not going to be in that job forever and I'd love to go back there. Like, I really do love that school. I can't imagine teaching anywhere else. I'm sure I will at some point, but then part of me is like, eh, I made your life like a living hell for a couple months and that was worth mm -hmm. it. Well, he also was pretty textbook abusive towards you. And that. And like, I don't use that word lightly at all. No, it was like so, so, so textbook with like the very, very public praise and then very, very public humiliation and shame like backed up right against each other. The changing of minds and then like making you feel like it's your fault. So what he would always say is like, you have to learn to be adaptable. Every time I would complain about the schedule stuff, he'd be like, you just need to be adaptable. You don't have any adaptability. I was like, you can either have like, perfect or adaptable and you all have so asked for perfect. That, yeah. So adaptable went out the window. Yeah, but I also <laughs> don't think that you would have left if that was the only issue. I mean, the screaming at you was exactly horrible. And from what I I've heard of people that are still at that school and the students is that the chaos is still there but the screaming has stopped. Good. Good. And I'm glad. I'm glad that you played a part in that because I don't think that a lot of people speak up and I think that's something I get frustrated with sometimes. I just don't understand letting people do that and I like really admire what you did. And I remember seeing your videos and like, you know, today you told us the expanded version of these stories, but you also were the inspiration for a lot of people to stop putting up with bullshit because uh -huh. it's very evident how much you love what you did. Like, like you fucking teach history lessons on Twitch for fun. That is pretty loser behavior, to be honest. With an assessment <laughs> at the end. Like, you fucking It's a trivia it. game. I'm just saying. You know what it is. As a teacher, we it know. It is an assessment. <laughs> it's an assessment. I'm not convinced that your journey in the classroom is done forever. She's not done. And thank God. Debatably, this might be a footnote. Yeah. Like, it might be like, yeah, the first school I worked at when I, my brain wasn't done developing had a really it weird ending. Really, <laughs> I mean, really not normal. When we're in it, it's so easy to be like, no school's perfect. <laughs> but a lot of people would put up with it. Yeah. If you're listening, you don't have to and you should not put up with it. Thank you for joining us, Miss Redacted. Thank you for coming <laughs> to Teacher Quit Talk where we went through my villain origin story. Yeah. Uh, that is why I am the way that I am. We love you guys so much. I am so glad we got to talk about it. I would take a bullet for you, even if you didn't ask. <laughs> oh my god, so nice. <laughs> If you like this episode, rate it good. And if you didn't like the episode, we're really sorry. We're going to do better. But um, that's directly offensive to misredacted. If you so. didn't like this episode, I will make sure at my next teaching job, the trauma is very different to give you a very different there taste you go. on the future See, episode. how considerate of you. Thank you. Traumatize yourself in a different way. And if you love us a whole lot and you want to fuck with us even more, we have a Patreon that you can subscribe to for $4 a month and you get deleted scenes, extended scenes, ad-free listening. We give you an additional bonus episode every week where we talk about secrets that you can't find anywhere else. <laughs> Vibes. We might call you from a blocked number if the mood strikes us. We might. Who's to say? And your marriage will improve immediately. Instantly. Upon hitting subscribe. Your marriage? Problems? Who are Guaranteed. they? I'm going to put it on the perk list. Good vibes reach into all areas of your life. But we love you. Good luck, love.